I'm going to read from verse 11 to 15. It says, Now all these things happen to them as examples, and they were written for our admonition or for our instruction, among whom the ends of the ages have come. Therefore, let him or her who thinks he or she stands, take heed, lest he or she fall. Amen. No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful. Everybody say, God is faithful. God, God is faithful. faithful. <laughs> Who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it or endure it. Therefore, my beloved, flee from idolatry. And then in verse 15 it says, I speak as to wise men. Judge for yourself what I say. <clears throat> Bow your heads, please. Close your eyes. Heavenly Father, we come before you this evening in the mighty name of Jesus. And we ask now, God, as we get into your word, that your precious word will get into us. I pray, Lord, that it be life-changing, Lord. But we ask you this in Jesus Christ's name, our Savior, our Lord, our healer, our deliverer, our everything. In Jesus' name we pray, and everyone said amen. 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 You can go ahead and have your seats. I want to talk to us a little bit about a lot of things. Temptation, trials, tests, Triumphs, you know, victories. And the title of this message is When God Made My Stumbling Blocks Into Stepping Stones. When yeah. God Made My Stumbling Blocks Into Stepping Stones. In other words, when He flipped the script. When he turned it around, <coughs> when he took what the enemy meant for evil, he turned it around for good. Amen. Amen. And he said, amen. 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 Have you ever wondered why some people keep missing it? Keep falling short. Keep failing. Especially right after they just got up. <coughs> they fall again. Now if you're here and you've never fallen, And you don't know yet what it is to be floored, knocked down. Or you've been victorious. Please bear with some of us. <laughs> For we're a little bit on the hurting side. Am I speaking to anybody here tonight? Amen. Some of us are still reeling. You don't know where you go down or you know what I mean? <laughs> While others are still dazed. See, the Bible says in Galatians 6 1, if any one of you have been taken in a fall, you which are spiritual, restore such a one 
in the spirit of meekness, gentleness. Considering yourself, please, you find yourself in that predicament. Amen. Some of you don't know this, but we're not only a praying church, a giving church, an evangelistic church, but we are a restoring church. Yeah. Restoring. I mean, I went to college. Sounds heavy, though. I graduated. And my thesis, you know, they asked, the professors asked, to bring a subject to the table or write about a subject that is not being done in the church. And my subject was the restoration of a fallen leader. Hello. I got copies, eh, man? You want to buy one, eh, man? <laughs> it costs like five dollars, eh, man? It might save your life, eh, man? <laughs> Somebody said it's good to learn from your mistakes. That's right. But it's a lot better to learn from others' mistakes. That's right. It's a lot less painful, too. Amen. Amen? Amen. And the scripture that we read, it has to do something with that. Yeah. The examples of people in the Bible that have, took, that have taken wrong turns, Amen. that have slipped, that have fell, but have gotten up. I mean, God takes us behind the scenes. He tells us about the good, the bad, and the ugly. Amen. Amen? Amen. See, the Bible says, and we read it in, in, in 1 Corinthians 10, 12. Let him who thinketh he stands take heed lest he falls. Mm -hmm. In other words, you say, you know what? I'm never going to fall. Mm -hmm. Man, I'm as strong as Superman. Or superwoman, or whoever, amen. Hey, you gotta be careful with that, right? Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. Because it's only the grace of God yes, that right. we are what we are. <clears throat> amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. We all got issues. Yes. But then we got those that think they don't have any. Well, they don't even know, but they have more issues than everybody else. Mm. <laughs> they just don't know that. <laughs> I remember talking to somebody, man, in the streets. I said, you know what's wrong with you? He said, there's nothing wrong with me. I said, that's what's wrong with you. <laughs> that you think that there's nothing wrong with you. That's dangerous. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. I mean, they're in denial. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Say, you know what, you know what, brother? You got anger issues. I don't got no anger issues. What makes you say that? <laughs> oh my goodness. Can't even see it, man. I mean, veins coming out like an incredible hole. <laughs> and the truth is, they're not going to go away. Until you take Holy Ghost authority over them in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Until you command them these things. Order them in the name of Jesus to go. Yeah. Amen. 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 You have authority. Yes. Mm -hmm. A lot of time we want to take authority over everybody else's issues, <laughs> except yours. <laughs> and, and secondly, you got to be willing to let it go. You'd be surprised how many people don't want to let them go. Those inches. They much rather hold on to it. I'm not talking about habits, bad habits. See, victory Irish people, you know, we have problem with, we have an addictive personality. 
Mm-hmm. Amen. I'm still hooked. But I'm hooked on Jesus. Amen. I think I get mine in the morning, the afternoon, nighttime, wee hours of the night. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 I'm still crazy. I'm crazy for the Lord now. I put in work now. Not for the devil. Put in work for the Lord. Amen. Amen? Amen. Amen. Attitudes, mindsets. You know, uh, 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 you know, thought patterns. Hmm. They need to go. Amen. And put on the renewed mind that the Bible talks about. Amen. 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 I preached about that over there in Santa Maria, and, and this girl, she was in the green room, and, and, and I, I kind of said, "Were you in there?" I said, what do you think? I said, oh man, this is, took me to a whole other level. He says, but, and then she told me about her family. He said, I couldn't even stand them. He says, but as I start coming to church, he said, my whole perspective changed. Mm. And now actually, I'm, I'm gonna spend time with them today. Amen. I don't know what I'm talking about. See, Amen. when you start changing up here in the mentality, your, your whole outlook, Changes. Yes. Amen? Amen. Listen, our God, my God is able, the Bible says in Ephesians 3.20, to do exceedingly and abundantly over and above that which we think or ask according to the power that is in us. Amen. Amen? Amen. Jeremiah 32.27 says, I am the Lord thy God of all flesh. And then he asks us this, is there anything too hard for me? Answer it. Is there? No. Is there? No. You can change anybody else, well, but you can't change me. Hmm. <laughs> That's pride. Luke 18, 27 tells us with man it's impossible, but with God all things are possible. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Luke 137, it tells us that. Amen. But you got to know it, you know, uh, that, that, that there's a problem. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> Men, because many don't know that. Amen? Amen. And then you got to have faith. Yeah. And faith, real faith, Pastor Benny says it like this, begins when all human reasoning ends. Mm -hmm. Amen? When you stop trying to figure it out. He said, well, I don't have faith, Pastor Benny. Yes, you do. The Bible says in Romans 12, 3, that you have all been given an issue of faith to start you off with. That's right. Amen? Amen? Enough to get you saved. Yeah. And then get you healed. And then get you delivered. And then, amen? Amen. amen. And your faith will grow as you step out. Amen? Amen. Amen. I mean, the Bible talks about people that have problems, and some of the problems were even worse than our problems. Yeah. Amen? Amen. And it's no wonder that God gave us Isaiah 45, 2 and 3, you know, as one of our, the first promised scripture, you know, that God was going to make the crooked places straight and break in pieces the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron and will give us the treasures out of darkness and hidden riches in secret places. Amen? Amen. A lot of times we read these passages of scripture, but we don't stop and apply them to ourselves first, but we go on and apply them to everybody else. But tonight, but tonight, tonight, I want us to stop and apply them to us. I'm talking about when God turned all <coughs> my stumbling blocks into stepping stones. And one of the things that help us is we've seen it. Seen what, Pastor Benny? That God wants to heal you more than you want to be healed. 
God wants to deliver you more than you want to be delivered. And some of you that are here, they're not even saved. God wants to save you more than you want to be saved. Can I hear you say amen? Amen. I mean, you are the number one treasure. Which many times we don't give the attention that it needs. Amen. I'm talking about you as an individual. I mean, you go on trying to win the whole world. All the while bypassing the very one that you mean the world to you. And that's you. Amen. Amen. You. I hated this guy right here. I mean, I told my mom one time, you've heard me say this, and I'll say it again. It's my testimony. You know, I told my mom, man, I was strung out on heroin. In and out of jail, in and out of prison. <clears throat> being shot, stabbed, ran over, overdosing all the time. You know what I told my mom? I said, it's your fault. Mm. I didn't have to be born. Mm. Tell me I wasn't twisted in my mind. Mm. Come on. <laughs> Not the only one. I was twisted, Joe. <laughs> the Bible says, John 8.32, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Shall set you free. <laughs> Talking about when God turned my stumbling blocks into stepping stones. See, the first thing that we need to really recognize and identify is that you have a problem. You know what Pastor Benny says? Every time you point the finger at somebody, there's what? There's three fingers pointing right back at you. I mean, you think everybody's, a, everybody's <coughs> is messed up. Except you. Uh. Amen? Amen. I mean, the Apostle Paul, I don't want to get into it in chapter 7. You read it. I will tell you. I mean, he says, I want to do good, I do bad. I mean, the guy sounds like he's backslidden. Huh. I said, the guy's saved? The guy's filled with the Holy Ghost? I mean, the guy needs to go into the home. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Nothing against the home. Did I? I mean, but he sounds really confused. Amen? You read it. I, mean, I want to do this, do that. He doesn't know whether he's coming or going. But then he sees something. In his, inside him. He says, all oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me? In me dwell is no good thing. That's what he said. Yeah. And I thank God that he says stuff like that because when, this, yeah. when I saw that, I said, man, there's hope. Amen. There's hope for me, man. Amen? Amen. And you gotta be, uh, 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 you gotta stop being in denial. Amen? You gotta stop it. Tell the person they can stop it. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> Cut it out. <laughs> Amen? Amen. And then you got to, thirdly, you got to set out to get help. And the help we need is twofold. God and people. Amen? Amen. I mean, when God came to Lazarus' tomb, Jesus, Huh. And he told Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus, you know, he was all wrapped up, tangled up, tied up, and bandaged. He probably hopped out. <laughs> <laughs> Amen? Amen? He been in the tomb for how many days? Three days. Come on, get it right. How Four. many days? Four. Four, Four days. Amen? Amen. <laughs> He was dead and stinking, amen? <laughs> Lazarus, come forth! <laughs> and the people were right there. And then he told the people, loose him and let him go. In other words, he told the people, start unwrapping him. <laughs> like an onion. Mm. <clears throat> I want you to know that that's the way we came in. 
we came in wrapped up, tangled up, tied up, yeah. man, and the leadership, the pastors, and everything. And here goes another bandage, man. Oh, but there's another one. Right. And they never end. Amen. <coughs> Amen. Amen. They never end. Amen. But he told the people, the looky loos, they were right there just looking. It's a lot of looky loos, man, in the church. You look at loose. You see looky loos uh, in the freeway. <laughs> you know, there's, there's a traffic, traffic, traffic. And the accident is on the other side. A <laughs> bunch of looky loos slowing down the traffic. Mm. Why don't you park the thing, man? Huh? <laughs> you know? Get your camera out. Take all kinds of pictures you want. Mm. Get out of the way, amen? amen. I'm on a mission. <laughs> amen? Amen. Man, it gets me upset. Bunch of looky loos. <laughs> That's what happened with Amen? Amen? Amen. amen. <coughs> Have you ever watched that commercial on television? You know, it, it's a medical alert. You know, they're advertising a medical alert device. And the commercial reenacts an elderly woman who falls and is on the floor. Mm -hmm. And she's crying out. She says, Help! I've fallen and I can't get up. <laughs> And I can't get up! <laughs> Amen? Amen. None of us are exempt from falling. That's right. Amen? Many of you heard me preach this. I backslid in church. Oh, yeah. I had enough sense not to go out. Because the Bible says if you go and do whatever you used to do, you might end up seven times worse. Mm. And I was bad just one time. <laughs> I mean, really bad. I couldn't see myself seven times worse. I don't even want to go what I, what I would have ended up at. You know? <laughs> so I had enough sense to stay in the church, but I backslid in church. I fell in church. Amen? Amen. I was down. The light was still on. But there was nobody home. <laughs> Amen? Amen. And nobody really, you know, bothered to help. Yeah. But I didn't cry out either. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Amen? You ever been there? Amen. If not, you will. Some of you may be there tonight. Listen, help is on the way. And hope is with it. Healing, deliverance. Yeah. God has heard your cry. What did I say? God has heard your cry. I didn't say nothing. <coughs> Yeah, but your heart did. You gotta, gotta hear that. Yeah. Amen. Right, Chum? Say amen, Chum. Amen. <laughs> Listen, even just because you're a Christian doesn't mean you're gonna miss it. You're gonna fail. Amen? Amen. I mean, in this world, man, you're gonna get your spiritual will knocked out of you. Amen? 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 Amen. 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 Your equilibrium is going to be thrown off. Yeah. Off track. And you're not going to be able to find your footing. Mm. Something inside of you wants to stand. But we don't have the mobility or freedom to act on. Amen? You know, act on what we have decided to do. I mean, our mind is telling you, get up! Get up! Mm. But there's no power. Right. 
to get up. <coughs> Amen? Amen. Like that woman in the commercial. Help! I'm falling down. And I can't get up. Amen? Amen. See, what's important is what you do when you're down. <coughs> Tell your brother, tell your sister. Now. Yeah. Amen? Amen. You gotta be honest, you gotta be real. You gotta be transparent. Like when you go see a doctor, if something is wrong, it's his, it's his, it's his job to pinpoint it. But it's our job to help him. By being truthful, being honest, being transparent. Where does it hurt? Mm -hmm. Oh, my foot hurts. But it's not really your foot, it's your heart. Mm -hmm. And you want the doctor to, well, what's, what's wrong with you, man? You need to go home and come back. Huh? <laughs> Wait till the doctor's time. Amen? Amen. And you gotta be careful also who you ask. For help when you're floored. Don't ask the bartender. <laughs> <laughs> the connection. <laughs> that homeless person out there that don't know whether he's coming or going. You've got problems in your marriage and you're going to go get advice from somebody that's been married five times? <laughs> Please. <laughs> Amen? And then stop making excuses. And make an appointment. Amen. With those in leadership that want to help you. Amen? Me as a pastor, I'm always the last one to find out anything. You expect me to, I'm not a, you know, I'm just like you. Can't read minds. <laughs> I mean, sometimes, you know, God gives me a word, of, a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom. Amen. But it's better when you come, come with it. Help me out. Help me out. Amen. Amen. Say, so how you doing? And then you try to sugarcoat the thing. Water it down. No, no, no. Let's erase that. How you really doing? Let's cut through the <coughs> chase. Amen. Is that what it is? I don't even understand that, but that's all right. <laughs> Amen? Amen. I mean, God wants to bless you. What did I say? Bless you. Bless you. Let me close. That's a shocker, huh? <coughs> and you gotta understand that five times. <laughs> I'm talking about allowing God to turn our stumbling blocks into stepping stones. <coughs> Listen, <coughs> bring in. That's what the Lord is saying, the Holy Spirit is saying. Bring in. What's he saying? Bring, bring in. in. What's he saying? Bring, bring in. in. What's he saying, Giovanni? Bring it! Bring it! I don't care what it is. Bring it! Because our God is able. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen? Bring your problem. Stop being in denial. Come clean. Don't just share the symptoms. But not those other, not 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 those other hidden secrets. Come on. Hello. Amen. Lay it all down at the feet of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Because He knows. The Lord knows. He knows everything. Yes. Amen. Amen. God would help me. Would have me tell you. Victory Hours Las Vegas, it's not over. Right. Yeah. What 
going to say? It's not, it's not over. over. <clears throat> it's just the beginning. Yeah. Amen. You know, like Jacob, you know, I, I mean, and I don't really want to uh, get into him, you know, but the Bible talks about when he was, uh, when he was running, mm. going nowhere fast. Jeremiah 32, 22 to 31. Let's put it on the screen. Let's, walk, let, 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 let's, let's get something out of this. Amen. Genesis. See, Jacob was like us. See, what do you mean, Pastor Benny? He loved God. He wanted to serve God. But he wanted to do it his way. See, he had himself a, a Burger King hat. Mm -hmm. He had a Frank Sinatra suit on. He wanted to do it his way. Amen? Amen? It didn't work. And when he was out of things, he just, you know, and, and, and his brother was coming after him and was going to take him out and not to breakfast, lunch, or dinner. He was going to take him out. You know, whatever, you know what I mean? Take him out? Amen. No. It's going to kill him. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> going to whack him. <laughs> and right here in chapter 32, verse 22, it says, Now he arose at night and took his two wives his two female servants and his 11 sons and crossed over the fort of Jabok. Everybody say Jabok. Jabok. The word Jabok means total surrender. What does it mean? Total, total surrender. surrender. And he took them, sent them over the brook and, and sent over what he had. Then Jacob was left alone. What was he do? What, 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 was, what happened? He was left alone. He was left alone. See, a lot of time is going to come down to that. It's just you and God. You and the Holy Spirit. You and God's Word. Having it out. And this is what happened to him. Then Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him. Until the breaking of day. And this is Jesus. Yeah. They call it a, what do they call it? Christophany. Theophany. What is it? A Christophany. Yeah. Okay. I got some theologians in the house. <laughs> Verse 25 says, Now when he saw that he did not prevail against him, in other words, he wasn't, you know, letting go, he touched the socket of his hip, and the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaks. But he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. <laughs> He says, I'm tired of living under the curse. Yeah. Oh, Lord. I want to be blessed. Yeah. So he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. Now some of you that don't know, Jacob means surplanter, hill catcher. In our terminology, it means jiver and conniver, a cheat and a fraud. Right. A cheater, a liar, a deceiver. That's what Jacob meant. So he said, what's your name? So I'm not, you know, I mean, you can fill in the blanks, amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. amen. He's coming clean. And he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. Israel means governed by God. For you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked, saying, tell me your name, I pray. And he said, why is it that you ask? About my name. He asked him, Jesus, what's your name? And Jesus doesn't respond. Jesus doesn't respond with an action. And he blessed him there. In other words, you want to know my name? Here it comes. Pow! Bless him. <laughs> <clears throat> mm -hmm. 
So Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. Just as he crossed over Peniel, the sun rose on him and he limped on his, and he limped on his, on his head. Amen? Amen. Amen. It's a broken man. But he was broken to be used now. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Every time he limped, it was a reminder to him <clears throat> that his sufficiency was no longer on himself. Yeah. But his sufficiency was now on God. Yeah. God was his resource. Yeah. God was his strength. God was the one that was behind the strewn wheel. W-I-L-L -L of his life. And he was guaranteed that he was never going to be steered wrong. Amen. Jesus introduced Jacob to himself. And that was when he became Israel. Can I hear you say amen? Amen. I'm talking about when God made my stumbling blocks into stepping stones. Yeah. Higher ground to Jesus. <laughs> How many remember the movie? I seen it over there in Santa Maria and it just kind of like, Forrest Gump. Yeah. My favorite movie. I cry when I seen that movie. Yeah. My wife said, What's wrong with you? <laughs> oh, I was having church. Yeah. And the theater. I saw myself in Forrest Gump. <laughs> Amen? Amen? But you remember when he was a child. He was crippled. He had braces on. Yeah. You remember? Yeah. Amen. And some bullies came. And he was right there with his little girlfriend. What's the girlfriend's name? Jenny. <laughs> Jenny. You see the movie too, right? <laughs> And these bullies were trying to bully him. And Forrest. He busted a move. Yeah, right. Amen? Amen? He busted a move and he started hopping, skipping, yeah. and he started running. Yeah. And then his little fan, <coughs> what was her name? Yeah. Yeah. She kept yelling out something and she said what? Run, what, what, what did she say? Run, Forrest! And Forrest took off, man. Forrest took off. Forrest took off and those things that were holding him down, they started falling off of him. Every last one of them, they started falling off of him. <laughs> and when you step out and you start believing God for the supernatural those things that have been hindering you that have been holding you down that have been paralyzing you crippling you in a sense yeah. they will begin to fall off every last one of them one by one and you're going to be running yeah. For Jesus. Can I hear you say amen? Amen. I'm running for Jesus. <laughs> I love how for his come. You know when he busted a move and everything was happening, he just, you know what? I want to go for a run. And he ran until he ran out of space. He turned around and he ran the other way. And then he ran the other way. And then he ran the other way. Guy. And I'm running this way, 
and I'm running that way, and I'm running over there, and I'm running over there. Because there was a time when I couldn't run. But Jesus, yes. I said, but Jesus Amen. came into my life. And he said, run, Benny, run! I'm 67. I got a couple of grandsons coming on the way. That gonna give me that gave me a good excuse to live to be a hundred. I'm gonna train them. I'm gonna disciple them. I'm not gonna be the only one. They got their dads too, amen. But I'm gonna put my two cents in. <laughs> Rest assured. <laughs> right there like Abraham playing catch with Isaac 100 and some years old uh -huh. oh, slow, slow down son slow down you know I'm about 150 over right here <laughs> when the Lord turned my stumbling blocks into stepping stones so I'm going to make two altar calls the first one is you're here and you're not saved. You're not born again. Or you're backslidden. And you say, Pastor Benny, I want to give my life to Jesus. Listen, if that's you, I want you to get out of your seat. And I want you to come to the front right now. Come on. Right. 